In this lecture, we're going to talk about the Task Manager and msconfig, which is Microsoft's configuration utility. Uh, we're going to focus on those two utilities, and we're going to go through each screen of what they look like and what we use them for. Um, you may see on the exam, you may see simulations based on these or questions based off these, because these are ones that you as an A-plus technician will use frequently, um, very heavily used for us. So the Task Manager. It's a utility that gives us a real-time look at the inner workings of Windows and the programs running on our computer. So to get to it, there's a couple of different ways, and I showed you a bunch of different screens up here. One way is from the run prompt. You can type in task MGR and hit OK, and that will bring up the task manager for you. Um, another way you can do it is you can just right click on the, um, on the task bar at the bottom, on the start bar, and go up to start task manager. Another way is click on the start menu and type in task MGR and it will pop up as well. Or on the far left, you can actually hit control of the lead on your computer, and then you can click on the uh, ta start task manager from there. So lots of different ways to get to it because it is a heavily useful tool. Okay? Any of those ways will work. It just depends what you like best. The first thing you're going to see here on the task manager, I have a picture on the right, is we have um, six different tabs on the task manager. We're going to go through each one individually here. The first one is applications. The application shows you all the applications that are currently running on your computer. So on this particular computer, I'm running Adobe Acrobat and Internet Explorer, and both of them are in a running state. They may be in a not responded state where the program is basically crashed and frozen, and from here I can actually click on it and then click on the end task at the bottom and it will delete and it will, excuse me, it will cancel that task and close it out. So it's one way to close a program when it won't respond to you. Okay? The second thing we can do is we can go over to the processes tab. And what processes does is it's going to show you all the program's components that are currently running in memory. So when you think of like Adobe Acrobat, you may have something like this, Adobe Acrobat Reader 32 is the actual program behind it. But in addition to that, we have all these other programs that are running in the background of my computer. Um, I have Internet Explorer. If I had two tabs open, look, I've got two Internet Explorers showing here. Explorer we talked about last time. That's the file system browser. Um, so different things like that, they're going to be running for us. Here we can determine what processes are using the most memory and which ones are using the most processes. So you see the CPU t uh, column. If there's one that's using like 98 and 99, it's really sucking up your CPU. There's only 100% CPU, right? That's a percentage. Under memory, you can see which ones are the biggest, right? Right now, the one that's using the most is the Windows Explorer at 18 megabytes, 18,000 kilobytes. If you want to cancel one of these, you can click on it and then you would hit end process in the bottom right corner and it would actually shut down that particular process. It is better to shut down the application than the process if you can. And the reason why is the application may have two or three processes running. And if I just cancel one process, I can close the, the application may crash and the other two may still remain in memory. Okay? Sometimes you have a program crash like PowerPoint and you're like, man, my computer's going slow. And you'll go in here to processes and you'll find there's like six other PowerPoints running in the background, um, even though PowerPoint's no longer up and running. And so you have to go in here and end those particular processes themselves because the program's been ended, but the process stayed in memory. So sometimes that'll be useful for you. The third thing we're going to look at is services. And we talked in the last lecture that services are these background um, programs that run in the background of the operating system. So here we're going to list our services and their status. This is only shows up in Windows uh, Vista and 7. In XP, there is no services tab. That was added in those. Um, it's an abbreviated version of your services component, Microsoft component that we dealt with in the last lecture. Under services, if we click on the services in the bottom right corner, it will actually open up the full-blown services component for you to be able to use those. This is just a short peek. So I can see what's running and I can see what's stopped. Um, but I'm, I can't actually start and stop things from here. So to do that, I would click on services in the bottom corner, and it would pop up for me. So it gives me a real quick way to look at things, but I can't really change much from there. Next one we're going to look at is performance. And under performance, this is where you really can see how much CPU, memory, page file, and caching stats are being used. So we talked about last time, if you look at the CPU usage, you can see it over time when the CPU is pegging. If my CPU is constantly pegging high at 90 or 100, maybe it's time for me to buy a new motherboard and a new processor, right? Because I'm obviously running some programs that really need some CPU. If my memory is constantly high, maybe I need to look at getting more RAM, right? 
Uh, if you look down in the bottom left, you can see the physical memory. You can see the amount of cached memory and what is available and what's running. The cache is what it's using to and from the hard drive. If that becomes really, really large with this page size, we may want to get more memory because that will end up speeding up our computer. This is really useful to determine whether or not the computer needs more memory. So it's one of the big uses that we'll use for performance. Next we have the networking tab. And the networking tab is going to show us the network utilization for each adapter. Now most computers only have one adapter, right? Um, but you may have a wired adapter and a wireless like this one does. We have two adapters. Uh, if you're on a server, you may have four adapters because you may have four cable connections to get you more throughput. Uh, and you can see which adapters are using more or less. And again, if you're constantly being pegged high on your network, you may want to get a better adapter. Maybe you're using wireless B network, right, which only operates at 11 megabits per second. And you're constantly pegged high because you're always using a lot of network. Maybe it's time to upgrade to a wireless N or a wireless AC where you can go 100 or 200 or 300 megabits per second. And that will uh, decrease the bottleneck. This helps you determine the performance of your connection. Again, the idea is we always want to look at what is, our, what is our, our max limitation on the computer because if we can find that bottleneck and we can improve it, we can get a better performance in the system. The last tab here is the Users tab. And this shows you which users are logged on to the workstation. Uh, this allows us to send messages to other users as well and we can disconnect or log off the user from the system. So why might there be more than one user on your system? If I'm the only guy sitting in front of it. Maybe a bad guy got access to your network, right? Uh, maybe you gave remote access, like I said before, I'm working on Sarah's computer remotely, so she's logged on and I'm logged on underneath her to be able to go and take control of her computer. And maybe she doesn't want that anymore. She can click on that person and hit disconnect and they'll be disconnected. Or you can click on that person and hit log off and it'll log them off. Or she can send a message to me like, stop touching my keyboard, right? Um, and then tell me that. So there's uses for it. In a single user environment, not usually that useful, but again, if you're working on a server, right, um, these same things apply. There's still a task manager in servers. And so if you go on the Windows 2012 server, for instance, and you pull this users up and you have 10 users connected to you, and you're thinking, hey, I'm going to reboot the server, maybe you want to send them a quick message, I'm going to reboot the server at 2 o'clock, log yourself off, save your work and log off. It's a useful way to do things, right? So the second one we're going to talk about, the second utility is the MS Config, which stands for Microsoft System Configuration. This utility allows a user to disable programs and services that are running at startup. So you can do that by going to the Run menu and typing in MS Config, or from the Start menu and type MS Config, and it will pop up. In here we have five different tabs. The first one is the General tab, and this is going to tell us what startup is being used. Are we doing a normal startup, a diagnostic startup, or a selective startup? Most of the time, you're going to be doing a normal startup. It loads all your device drivers and all your services. If you tried that and you had a crash on load, you may want to load it as a diagnostic startup, where it only does the minimum basic requirements to get you online, uh, to bring your computer up. And then you can kind of start putting things back in one at a time until you find out what the error is. Because maybe you just installed a video card and that driver was bad, right? So that would be a good thing for a, a diagnostic or a selective startup in that case. The next tab we have is the boot tab. It allows us to configure the advanced boot options for startup. Now on this particular system I have one hard drive and one operating system. So it's not real complicated. I'm going to boot from the C drive because it's my only hard disk with an operating system. But let's say you had a dual boot system. Maybe you're running Windows and Linux. Which one do you want to boot first? Windows or Linux? Well if you're always using Windows but you have Linux there just for testing, we want to boot to Windows primarily, right? And so we can set that here by clicking on the one we want to set up by default. Um, and then we can give it something like a 30 second timeout where I can make that change at the beginning. It says, which do you want to boot to? Windows. And if you don't do anything in 30 seconds, I'll boot to Windows or arrow over and select Linux, right? And so you can do it either way that way. So that's the idea of the boot tab. It gives you some configuration ability there. The next one we have is services. And this is, again, those background running programs that we had before, right? And we may want to turn some of those off, okay? Because they may be malicious. You may see something like, I don't know, a simulation that has to do with this, uh, where you have some malicious services running. How would you get there? You go to MS Config, click on the Services tab, uncheck the ones you don't want, and then hit Apply, and they will stop and no longer be running. Um, and that will allow you to restart the computer without those services running and then delete them. So, something to keep in mind, you can enable and disable system services from here. 
the more stuff you have here in your services, the more memory your computer is going to be using. So you may want to go through here and delete services that you don't need. But again, you want to check and see what they are first. You don't want to just willy-nilly choose what you're going to what you're going to do or not. You have to know what's good and what's bad. Um, so again, you have to research what's in there and see what is malicious and what's not. The next one is the startup. Startup is any programs that are going to start by default. And lots of programs when you install them want to start up by default. For instance, Adobe Acrobat wants to start up by default. Do I need Adobe Acrobat to start up every time I turn on my computer? Probably not, right? But they want to because by having it already preloaded, when you click on it, it loads faster. And it gives you better performance. So if you use Acrobat a lot, it's useful. Same thing with iTunes. When you install iTunes by default, it wants to install itself. So every time you turn on your computer, it loads itself into the, into the uh, background. Again, it's going to suck up a lot of your memory if you're not using iTunes every time. And so these are choices you have to make, right? Um, here we have Netgear, which is probably some wireless driver, which we may or may, may not need. Because again, Windows, if we have the driver already installed, we don't need the utility from Netgear on top of it. So you can uh, get rid of these. You can disable them all or enable them all or uncheck individual ones. Hit Apply and hit OK. The last one we have is Tools. And all Tools is is really a link of shortcuts. Okay? So here we have the displaying the Windows version. We can change our UAC sections. We can go to the Action Center. We can go to Windows Troubleshooting, Computer Management, System Information, Event Viewer, Programs, System Properties. This is just a big long laundry list of all sorts of things that we may need to get access to when we're doing repairs on somebody's computer. So it's just one more place that if you're like, I can't remember how to get to computer management. If you go into msconfig and click on tools, there's a link right there to computer management. So it's just one more way to get to places. Sample question. Uh, yes? So msconfig from the start menu, you just click on the start menu and then type in msconfig and it will pop up. Yep. Um, or the other way is if you hit the Windows key R, it'll bring up a run prompt. And from there, you can type in msconfig and hit enter, and it will pop up. So if you're a local administrator and you want to determine why a laptop is taking so long to boot into the operating system, which of the following tabs in msconfig would the administrator access to best determine why it's taking so long to boot? Would that be the startup, the tools, the general, or the boot? So in this case, it's going to be the startup. Okay. And the reason why it's the startup is startup, remember I said it loads all those programs on boot. And if you have like, I've, I've done this before, where I've gone to a customer like, my computer takes forever to boot. And I look at their startup list, and they literally have 30 or 40 programs that are loading up before it ever loads the computer. That's ridiculous, right? So I'm going to go through and I go, well, you know what? They don't need Reader. They don't need iTunes. They don't need this. They don't need that. And I start taking them out and just bring it down to the bare essentials. You should have th no more than probably five things loading at startup. Um, otherwise, your computer is going to be really slow, okay? That's my personal opinion, and it's worked really well for my computers. The boot tab, while they want you to grab boot from this, that's why they use the word boot in the question, um, the boot tab's only going to select which operating system does get booted. So if you select boot, that's saying, I'm going to boot to Windows 7, or I'm going to boot to Linux first. That's usually the configuration we'll use with boot. 